Excellency, the provisional president of Africa, Marcus Masai Garvey said, that if the black man and woman are not careful, you will drink in all the poison of Western civilization and die from its effects. Garvey said the black man needs to understand you can't beg for your place. You can't even demand your place. Garvey said, make your place. But when he came back from England, hanging out with Deuce Muhammad Ali, one of the forerunners of the Moorish Science Temples, who he ultimately had to throw out of the Garvey movement because he was teaching sovereignty instead of global African liberation. So Garvey said, I respect you, my brother, and I respect your Moorish philosophy, but that's not my program. My program is power, not law. So he gets back to Jamaica, on the way back, he reads a book written by a man who some of you consider to be a sellout, Booker T. Washington's Up From Slavery. It was Booker T. Washington who many of you would consider an accommodationist Negro who motivated Garvey to build the largest black movement of all time. Look at that. See, you need to understand something. 19th century black leaders and activists cannot be categorized as easily as you and I because they didn't have the formal ideological structure that you and I have. So Booker T will look integrationist in some lectures and he'll look pan-African in others. For those of you who think Booker T. Washington was a sellout can you explain to me why this man out of his own pocket, not Tuskegee's account, but his personal account, paid and financed civil rights struggles undercover? If he was a sellout, why did he start the National Negro Business League traveling around the country helping black folk sustain economic capital? If Booker T was a sellout, why was Tuskegee Institute one of the top hiding places for fugitive revolutionaries. If he was a sellout, why did he bring Africans from Africa to Tuskegee Institute and teach them enterprise and economics and finance them to go back to Africa to build independent states? This is in the 1800s. Booker T was a no sellout, but he told the white man what the white man wanted to hear as a strategy. And because you don't understand military science, because you don't understand that a leader can't always say what he means, you judge them a sellout. Just like you judge Dr. King a sellout because you didn't know that the Southern Christian Leadership Conference had a stockade of weapons. Because they expected nonviolence to break down. That Dr. King, when he took over the movement, did not agree with nonviolence. Bayard Rustin and the rest had to force him into not talking about arming black folks. Jumping to conclusions about leaders too fast. So Garvey gets back to Jamaica and with the support of his girlfriend, Amy Ashwood Garvey, they launched the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League.